A friend had an abortion before her marriage. Her husband doesn't know. It was his kid. She swore me to secrecy. I will never tell. Reddit, what secret are you taking to the grave? What do you know, it's my favorite bro, back to watch another story time with the boys. So good to see you my man. Join the fam by subscribing and liking the video, so you don't miss any more sick stories from your boy Andrew. If you join the fam, you'll get access to our browser's account. No more lollygagging, let's get into the stories. The first person I ever fapped to was Wanda from the Fairly Odd Parents. In 7th grade Joe thought Brandon put the lime salt on his brownie, but it was actually me. Me and my wife were going through tough times. I just got back from Afghanistan. I played Russian roulette with my .357 Magnum, 3 loaded. I lost. Getting a divorce now and alive. Bacon is always the first food to be cooked by my father in the mornings. As a child, I would steal myself an extra piece and blame it on my little brother. Hence, I'd get a total of three pieces, and Broski would only get one. Looking back, the oldest kid gets away with so much crap. My dad's a national socialist and he regularly goes to meetings. I was raised on Germanic folklore and the idea that I'm superior to others because I'm of German descent. I have plenty of Jewish and slavish friends, and I just tell them my dad died when I was younger. One night I woke up with my mind in a twist, my mom was in the hospital at the time, I had a crazy urge to call them and check on her, but I reasoned not to because I couldn't think of an excuse, so I fell back to sleep. 5 am I get a call that they checked on her and she didn't have a pulse, I just think there was something I could have done that destroys me to even think about it. My mother killed my father, when I was 8 years old, with a shotgun blast to the face. He bled out through what was left of his head into my lap. Blood has a smell, a stink, when there's enough of it around. She got off, because it was a self-defense situation. She sent me to school the next day, and ever since I've pretended that I'm a well-adjusted, stable person. I'm not. I worked for a shipping company at a customer desk. A guy I had known came in to ship a package. He was a known drug dealer in my town. He didn't recognize me. The package was wrapped in duct tape. I took the package, brought it out back, and made it disappear into my backpack. After my shift I opened the package and found $37,890 in cash. I never went back to the job and never heard anything about it. I left Texas a month later with cash in hand. I went to counseling for abuse after my parents divorced, and I was never abused, so they put me in the regular room with all the people there who were waiting for their siblings. I claimed my father abused me so I could go to the special room with all the abused kids. It was horrible. I had no right being in that room with all those people, they all were really messed up from what their parents had done to them, and I just got in so I could play you guyo. Edit, I was probably 7 or 8, and for what I know my father did not get in trouble, I see him every week. I didn't know what I was doing back then. In third grade, I cheated on my history exam. In fourth grade, I stole my Uncle Max's 2P, and I glued it on my face when I was Moses in my Hebrew school play. In fifth grade, I knocked my sister Edie down the stairs, and I blamed it on the dog when my mom sent me to the summer camp for fat kids, and then they served lunch I got nuts, and I pigged out, and they kicked me out. But the worst thing I ever done I mixed a pot of fake puke at home, and then I went to this movie theater, hid the puke in my jacket, climbed up to the balcony, and then, tt then, I made a noise like this. Hua 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 aia and then I dumped it over the side, all over the people in the audience. And then, this was horrible, all the people started getting sick and throwing up all over each other. I never felt so bad in my entire life. When we were kids, a female cousin and I played doctor around the age of 6 or 7. Talked about it a few years ago around the age of 25, became deeply intimate, and have had really incredible sex several times over the last few years. She recently got married and we have since ended our relationship. We are both normal, successful, contributing citizens, you'd never know. Hopefully no one finds out, but I miss her and our level of intimacy. When my cousin died a few years ago my family went over to his house to look around for a sense of closure. 
I ducked away for a bit and noticed his computer was still on. On his desktop was his porn folder. I deleted it before my aunt and uncle saw it. This is ducked up and definitely a secret I'm taking to my grave. Back when I was 13 I had discovered masturbation and the closest thing I could fap into was my mom's panties. I used to steal her panties, lick them, sniff them, and wear them around the house under my pants, I would coom on command while talking to her while trying to keep a straight face. It was weird and exciting. Well into my teenage years, whenever my friends would invite me over, I used to sneak into their parents' room and the sisters' room or their own room and steal their panties. I would wear their panties and do the same, talk to them, while cooming with a straight face, they had no idea, I hope, it was also exciting to me, and it's ducked up as well. Thongs, g-strings, boy shorts and normal granny panties, I've accumulated all over the years and had close to 200 pairs. A few years ago I got serious with a girl, I fapped in her mom's panties as well and moved in with her, I had to dispose of my precious panty collection, so I did with sadness. Now I work in a job where I take care of people's luggages, sometimes I go into female luggage and steal their panties, fap in them and return them in their luggage. Call me sick, I know it's ducked up, but it's a secret I'm taking to my grave. Might as well get this off of my chest. Without going into great detail, purposely vague, more than five years ago I was a part of a group of three to five people that would successfully take the MCAT in place of others for a fee. We were all adept at taking the exam. Our clients were old money types with kids who could not make the cut or didn't want to try. The fee was $100k plus any other extra charges. Fake fingerprints, IDs, prosthetics, you name it and we did it. I had no qualms doing this as my reasoning was, if they can't pass the exam, how in the duck would they get through med school plus steps? Take their money and let them fail out of med. No problems until one of the clients actually managed to get through school and had racked up some malpractice, thankfully nothing too serious. It hit me hard to the point of attempted suicide. I quit and went to therapy, and the group disbanded for other reasons shortly thereafter. I'm much doing much better now. But this info is staying with me from people that I know, and staying with you, random reader. When my brother committed suicide I was walking into his house to go hang out, and I never knock because we're best friends, so his house is my house, and my house is his house. Anyway, I walked in got some food from the kitchen, and figured he might have a girl over, because usually he'll hear me, and say what's up from across the house, so I didn't bother him. I've been in his house eating for about 10 minutes when I hear the gunshot that killed him. When anyone asks I tell them I found him like that. I don't think I'll be able to ever tell anyone I know that, if I would have just knocked or walked down the hall I might have saved his life. Edit. To give an insight on any reasoning for what my brother did, whether it be financial issues, relationship troubles or what have you, I'll give you the last line of the short note he wrote before he died. It reads, so I am truly sorry if you think I'm being selfish when I have been selfless my entire life, and it has left me with nothing. Rest in peace brother, I miss you. I'm not sure if I'm going to take this to the grave or not. Several months ago I, 22, had I'm lonely and you're lonely sex with my ex-girlfriend, 19. The next day we woke up and decided mutually that it was a mistake, we should move on, etc. Well, that small mistake turned into a larger one. She got pregnant. We wrestled with a lot of things for the next few weeks. Did she want to consider abortion? No, did she want to consider adoption? Possibly. How do we tell our parents? My parents would be upset, then immediately turn into the supportive parents they are. Hers would absolutely cut her off, never talk to her again, completely disown HER, they told her they would hundreds of times, when she was growing up. So, we struggled. One week turned into two, which turned into three. She was now eight weeks pregnant. I get a call one night last week around 1 am, she said that she is heading to the hospital, that something isn't right. I meet her there, she describes incessant bleeding and very, very bad cramps. After five hours in the hospital, the doctor confirms what we'd already begun to fear, she had had a complete miscarriage. Just like that, then, she was no longer pregnant. Even in the middle of this terrible incident, she said she wanted no one to know about it. No one. 
About the pregnancy, about the miscarriage, about anything. I'm still conflicted, miscarriages are very emotional events, and I can't go to my parents to talk it over with or hug it out with my best friend or anything. It's been a weird rough few days. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.